Grain farmers are price takers. And so when you think about marketing something, you maybe think about marketing a product or a brand or a company, but when you market your grain, you are literally taking the price that the elevator or the end user posts at that time. And they, they will tell you what the price is. And there's a lot of transparency between the buyers. So it's very competitive, but nonetheless, um, you call and ask what the price is, or you look it up and that's what you get. A good grain marketing plan is risk management. It is looking what's up ahead, what is the potential upside in a market, and what's your downside. So are you going to miss out on, you know, a dollar a bushel or, you know, 20% increase in the price, but are, is your price maybe going to drop 50% in that time too? You don't know, and you can never know, you only guess. Grain is traded on um, the futures market in Chicago, and the price of corn can go up or down, you know, 10% in one day. That's huge. We are, in a really big way, impacted globally on our, uh, our commodity prices. If you think about it, the price of my soybeans that I'm going to grow this year uh, are right now being affected by weather in South America. And um, if you are not selling right, or you're not, you're not hitting the, the right part of the market, then you're basically being left behind as far as your potential revenue goes and it can be stressful like weather's stressful but grain marketing is very stressful because there's so many things that you don't control you can't control um the outside markets and you can't control whether you know the flour industry in ontario isn't doing good and they're not buying ontario wheat you can't control those things you can only look at the price every day and see if you are going to take that price or you're not going to our corn, soybeans, and wheat are all priced on the U.S. Commodities Exchange. The exchange rate plays a big factor in our grain prices because we're selling them in U.S. dollars. You have to not only watch the grain markets, you don't have to watch what the end users are paying and the futures and the basis, but you really have to watch, you have to be almost a um, currency expert as well in Ontario. And that's actually a very unique and challenging aspect of selling in Ontario. You're always looking in the rear view mirror thinking, man, what could I have done differently? But you can't, can't let yourself get bogged down by that. I always think you gotta learn for the next year. Maybe, maybe we'll sell a little bit less before harvest. But the other thing about grain marketing is you can't have a hard and true plan that never changes either because the dynamics in the market are always changing. Things sometimes happen at times of the year that they don't normally happen. So the market might rally at a time when it doesn't normally rally and you have to be ready you have to know the price that you want to sell at and be prepared to make a percentage of your sale at that time. So you have to always be paying attention. So I would check the grain prices every day. Most farmers would check them multiple times a day. When I sell to a grain buyer, um, we have a contract and I'm promising him I'm going to bring him all those bushels. But if I oversell more grain than I actually grow, then we have to have a talk about um, being short on that contract because I've broken the contract. And then it gets a little complicated because if the price goes up, um, if you sell at 14, the price goes to 15, then you owe him a dollar times however many bushels you're short. When you're short on a contract, you make it good because you can run out of places to sell to pretty quick if you just walk away. We have um, a very large port system in Hamilton and that grain goes all over the world. So we can sell direct down to Hamilton and it will go corn, beans, wheat, shipped all over the world. And then we have local Ontario feed mills. We've got flour mills. We've got ethanol plants. We have just, if you can imagine something to do with grain, it happens in Ontario. Like there's just so many places you can go to. And if you sell, to you know, maybe a third party and they can send you to five different feed mills that they can pick. So there's just so many different end users and trying to keep it simple in a complicated and um, intricate little area. On the same hand, that's also a blessing because you have just almost a world at your fingertips.